Was it difficult to get into the SAS? It is difficult, yeah. What does it require? I think the best way of putting it, which is the way it was put to me when I asked my friend who, who had been in it, and I said, how do, we, how do I get in? What's the story? You know, can you give me some tips and a bit of sort of mentoring? And he looked at me and just said, no, 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 no. He said, if you want to get in, you will. You've just got to want to get in badly enough. You're on your own. Can you, what was that, what, how so? What do they do to you? Well, you, you know, obviously you're not at, entirely on your own. You're moving across the Welsh mountains, the Brecon Beacons, and you're going checkpoint to checkpoint. And your speed has got to be up to a speed. You don't actually know what that speed is, so you've got to really keep going. And um, unlike in the army, nobody is saying well done, and nobody is saying badly done. And that's why very hard when you come from the army where everything is, you know, everything is being looked after and you're being shouted at and, you know, get, get a move on, man. Or, you know, well done, man. There's nothing like that. It's just you're suddenly in this psychological vacuum of no encouragement, no criticism. Just, OK, where are you now? Your next place is here. Show me on the map. OK. There's nothing magic about it. They're just trained as a, a pilot is trained to develop special capabilities, techniques, and ways of doing things uh, once they've been selected. And uh, theirs is a specialist job uh, in exactly the same way as a pilot or a member of a tank crew. Uh, and I think at times people think there's something magic about them, there isn't. They're just very high-grade people uh, trained to a very high level in specific type of operation. magnified attention to detail. I think that's what separates us from the other soldiers. It's that, um, that mindset, those small things that we accumulate, which stops us from tripping up down the line. And it's just, we're called the thinking soldier. It's because we, we, we don't just run in and headlessly do the job. We think about what needs to be done, how best to execute it, and then we, we carry out the job to the best of our ability. When you were the first man in to, to, to go into a, a, a Taliban camp, yep. for example, mm -hmm. how did you prepare for that? Everything is, is it's a numbers game, you know. When I was stacking up against the door, my initial thought was, when I go through that door, I know there's someone stood on the other side with a weapon. When I go through that door, what are the chances of that person, that untrained person, getting one or two bullets off on his weapon. Okay, the chances are quite high. What are the chances of one of, the, one of those bullets hitting me in the head and killing me outright? That's very slim. You know, it might hit me in my body armor, it might hit me in the, in the legs. So what are the chances of me actually dying? It's slim because I'm the aggressor, I'm the trained soldier. By the time I get in and finish the job, all my power is on my back, he will come in and finish the job. I've taken a lot of lives, but what I do remember is not necessarily the people that I've killed, because obviously I've, I'm the first man in, I've been done three tours of Afghanistan, I'm kicking doors down on a daily basis, we're hunting down Taliban commanders. But what I do remember is not pulling that trigger. What people must remember that my job is to conserve life, is to save life. 
I only take life when there's a level of evil that's been surpassed or I'm in immediate threat or my powers are in immediate, there's immediate danger to life. But what I do remember is being st stood there and I could have taken a shot and every time, you know, it just wasn't right and I took my finger off the trigger. Those are the times that I do remember.